to be present in that moment. Um, and we can, again, we can do this as individuals in our own lives, but also as marketers, really getting focused on what it is we want to convey and how we're going to convey that in a way that will break through and will stand in contrast to all of these tactics. And it's important to point out that branding is art and art has a frame. The song ends at a certain time, the screen, you know, the, the frame of the, the frame on a piece of art is a frame that, that um, it's uh, it, that parameters, even though they start to maybe feel a little bit restrictive are necessary for attention. It makes the brain pause and go, this is a thing that I should pay attention to. So a little exercise uh, that we have for you, because um, often we, when we think about our own behavior, it kind of goes to the, uh, the Root and River marketing golden rule, which is don't market to under, unto others the way you wouldn't want to be marketed to, is think about your attention. And think about when, when you're being pitched, when you're being pitched something, and being pitched could be you get a direct mail piece, or you get an email or a LinkedIn message, or, or just pitched in general. When you're getting pitched, what are two or three things that do get your attention? What are some, what's some language that you notice or tactics that you notice that get your attention? And what are two or three things that annoy the crap out of you? Like when you see it, it just makes you cringe or makes you clench your teeth. Um, and then as you get answers, just post them in chat. Um, really curious to hear what, what gets your attention that you like and what gets your attention that's annoying. Mm -hmm. Cringeworthy, right? Cringeworthy, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you guys as we pause for answers? What, what, when you think about being pitched as either professionals or as consumers, what, what, what uh, gets your attention positively? Um, always a personal touch. I think, um, even when something's being automated to me, um, anytime it speaks to me as a person, um, anytime it feels like it's not computer generated. Um, so that can be, you know, more casual copy, um, more conversational copy. That can be something that's personalized to me if it's a one-to-one -one interaction. Um, so anything that feels like it's not a computer speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a email from a biz dev guy that I think he works for like a data company and, and he emailed me and it was a picture um, of him holding a coffee cup, two coffee cups, one with his name on it and one with my name on it. Oh. And I'm like, that's pretty brilliant. I emailed him and said, we're not really a prospect, we're a small boutique, but kudos to you for something that shows that that's you put cool. some effort into it. And I think that's kind of what you're saying too, Jen, is like there's effort, like to yeah. be personal, um, you can still be automated and, st and be personal. It just takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more intention. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't think we expect a lot, you know, this big, um, you know, gesture, but even just a few minutes of personalization, um, just to, I, I don't think it takes a lot. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. We have a couple of responses that have come in. Um, Mike says, pulling my heartstrings gets my attention and humor gets my attention. Same, I'm the same on this, both of those. Or unexpected things um, get my attention too. Um, Cork says um, he likes when they describe a problem that I have that, have, that, that has been bothering me and dislikes telling me about their product mm -hmm. or service with no interest in the problems I'm dealing with. I uh, love that. So good. Um, Monica says, lots of really solicitations I appreciate if they know something about our company. Something that just says I'm expanding my network with no other connections gets a quick delete. Yep. <laughs> um, Anne says, pitch dramatic music with a scary fact and um, TP almost immediate intimidate you into taking action. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, ads that start off with, Laura says, um, ads that start off with, I can't believe this, simple secret works. <laughs> then there's a click clickable video, gets my attention, but it, but it's annoying. 
<laughs> you can always on that one, you can always tell what's called funnel language. It's actually a discipline that's taught by a company here in Austin and it's everywhere. It's volumes of copy, all with words like secret and free and only. And it's yeah. like one uh, giant pile of psychological manipulation. And uh, that always bugs the hell out of me too. Yeah. Mike also says, don't insult me with your message. That annoys me. Bigotry pisses me off. <laughs> I thought recommendation as branding experts don't use bigotry in your marketing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, something Laura says, super annoying. DMs where the person writes, hey, love, I thought you might like oh, acting like we have a relationship gross. and then pitching me. Yeah. Hate that too. And Serena says, oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, Monica says, I look forward to Yeti's catalog with lots of amazing photography and wonderful storytelling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to add that. When something's beautiful in that way, I don't, it's funny because beauty is like, it's, like, it's kind of, it can be weird. Oh. It's one of those things that's weird. Yeah. Because it's like, if, if I'm following someone on Instagram and it's all so beautiful, like I'm, I'm no, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But when it's be like beautiful images that are interspersed also with reality, then that's interesting. Or, mm -hmm. I think nature mm -hmm. always gets my attention too now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I get, um, like I look forward to getting the Filson catalog. So Filson's a product, comp like a um, lifestyle brand out of Seattle. It's been around for like 130 years, uh, famous for their bags primarily. But I may not buy something when I get it, but I always look through it because of it's so well crafted, like the paper, the photos, mm -hmm. you know, I, the, yeah, that, 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 introduction or the use of art artful language or artful imagery like truly intentional that's hard to pull off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but when it does it's magical for sure right and it's funny because uh, the outerwear catalog is one of those for me i've never bought <laughs> anything from them but it's always so beautiful that i i hold on to it for a while i'll look through it two or three times and be like wow that's so expensive but beautiful <laughs> and the paper is good and it's sustainably sourced and I, yeah. And then I'll set it aside and come back a week later and go through that same, same process. <laughs> so it definitely has things like that. They have longer shelf life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, those are great. Hopefully my connection stays strong. We'll share some of the things that we said. One more thing I saw it come through. Um, Laura said, well crafted it and intention for the win. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for it, yeah, I, pre I presently have a marketing guy who sent me an uninvited email and doesn't seem to get the hint that I haven't responded to his several follow up emails. Yeah, that over, over to. solicit, over pitching, mm -hmm. like maybe twice. Maybe twice. I, I mean, I was in sales for many years and, you know, it's the old seven no's is a yes until you oh. get to a yes. That's kind of true, but not like seven emails to bother people. But it's, it doesn't translate to uh, outbound marketing very well. Well, and I think that those rules were created in a world where there weren't so many ways to, to interrupt people. You know, so a lot of those like old sales rules were, and, but a lot of people haven't gotten the memo on that. It's like, again, to our current world, we are, we have, I think it